Hey guys, what's going on? Um, it's another great episode of Lunchtime Talk with Steve. Of course, I'm your host, Steve Barrow. And today we have Earl Ferguson on with us. He is a broken glass artist. All right, now you got to see some of his work. I'm telling you, this guy is awesome. All right, so we'll be back with you in just a moment. Go ahead and share the link with your friends, your relatives, your favorite group, all that good stuff. All right, and we'll be right back with you. And we are back. Um, so, <laughs> all right. Um, Tracy uh, already has a comment. She says she was born in Omaha. All right, Tracy, let me go ahead and bring one of um, your fellow Omaha. I don't know how to pronounce it. What would you call a person from Omaha? A Ohamian? I don't know. <laughs> Someone out there is going to correct me, I'm pretty sure. But, uh, but let me go ahead and bring Arl in. Hey, Arl, how are you doing? Hey, how are you doing there, Steve? I am doing great. I'm doing awesomely awesome. Um, so what do you call a person from Omaha? Well, that's a good question. I would have to actually research that one. I left there <laughs> when I was like two years old. So uh, that's kind of, it's good to know that there's somebody else out there from uh, Omaha. Very, very good. <laughs> All right. So, um, so let's go ahead and get started. I mean, so is the is um the the proper title a broken glass artist that's um that's what the proper title is uh the the title is actually uncut glass pictures ah uncut glass okay um so tell me about how you got started with this i was reading the um you know the promo and um and i mean tell you go ahead you got to tell the story <laughs> well, to be honest with you it just it really just fell in my lap uh this was uh years ago I had a mirror on my wall and um, for some reason I didn't put that mirror up correctly. And that mirror just fell and shattered. I was so pissed off, you wouldn't believe it. But in the process of uh, sweeping up the pieces, I saw a piece that looked like a hand. I couldn't believe it. It really looked like a hand. I picked it up, I put it on the table 
And then from there, I just started assembling pieces. I got really fascinated by the shapes that came out. And that's kind of how I got started. I never went to school. Um, and uh, it's just a gift that fell in my lap. And uh, that's kind of where I'm at. I actually started these pictures uh, a little over 20 years ago. And I did a few of them. And then I stopped for like 20 years, to be honest with you. And I started making them again uh, early last year. Uh, the reason mm -hmm. I really started making them is I started to go back and forth to Maryland. And uh, I made one and my sister really loved it. But her friends kept bothering her like, where did you get that? Uh, you know, and there was all these questions for many years. And then um, when I left there last Christmas, not this Christmas here, but the Christmas before that, and she told me that don't be surprised if somebody come in and steal that picture. Uh, a, light bulb, a light bulb just kind of blew up in my head. And when I came back uh, to Florida early last year, I said, well, I'm going to buy some materials. And I started again. So kind of that's kind of how I really got serious last year. All right. So tell us about the um, the painting that we were just looking at. Uh, that's actually with uh, strictly stained glass. There's no mirrors on this one. Uh, what happened in uh, 2019, I used to only use shattered pieces of mirror. And I mm -hmm. went to a show one day and a person said, you ever start thinking about using uh, stained glass? And to be honest with you, I know stained glass is a little more expensive. And then I decided to start making them with uh, stained glass. And I found that they were very colorful. This one is a person on a uh, coconut tree. Uh, it was kind of me reminiscing when I was back in Jamaica. I spent a good 10 years in Jamaica uh, with my grandmother there. And I uh, remember a lot of people uh, climbing on the coconut tree, getting a coconut. And this is kind of, you can actually uh, use it as another type of tree, but I was kind of reminiscing, uh, reminiscing during that period, uh, a person chopping a coconut from a coconut tree. Okay, that's pretty cool because I mean it's like some art you um especially when you you know like you call it abstract art but some art um you know um you gotta try to use your imagination or whatever this is like right there in your face you can see what this is this is not there's nothing abstract about this it's like you can see the person climbing up the tree you know um th this is awesome how much does a piece like this go for? A uh, piece like this, you're talking about maybe uh, 150. Um, I need to correct one thing. The cutlass is actually a shattered piece of mirror. And that's the only piece with mirror. Everything else is uh, stained glass. Uh, so mm. the, the price is kind of, you know, depends on the size. It depends on the amount of work. But I start, I try to stay within a very reasonable price range from anywhere from 75 to $350. So this one here is uh, pretty much well priced. <coughs> All right, and um, and then um, let's look at. There's another piece that we have as well here, which is this one. Yes, that's the uh, that's a market day three. That's a much larger picture, to be honest with you. That's uh, I would say that's about uh, 20, 29 by 30, 39 in terms wow. of uh, the dimension in inches. It's actually uh, three people, actually four people going to the market. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you have uh, the last person in the back actually have a bunch of banana in their backs. On the back, yeah, and the uh, others have the, the baskets on their head. <laughs> I remember yeah. those days. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, market day four. I've actually made uh, four different market days, and this is market day four. So um, there, this is uh, probably the biggest one I ever made. And um, I was very excited how it came out because you see the combination of stained glass and mirrors. And yeah, definitely. And what about the background? The background looks like a painting. Um, did you paint the background or what? Um, I also do what? my own background. I, I, I started out um, using a roughage background. I used mm -hmm. to own a diable shoe store after I uh, left Kenny's Shoes. And mm -hmm. that's kind of how I learned my colors. And uh, this one here is uh, strictly acrylic and, uh, you know, spray paint. And that's how I did this particular background. <coughs> so tell me a little bit more about, um, about you know, your, your, um, 
your time with the shoes with the shoe store. You you said you worked for Kenny Shoes and then you had your own shoe store, correct? That is correct. How long um, were you in the shoe business? I was in the shoe business, I would say, for about maybe 30 years. I wow. started out when I uh, when I left Michigan and I went back to uh, uh, Maryland to uh, to uh, to work. And uh, I just I ended up working for Kenny Shoes as a full timer, assistant manager, manager. And I went on to be a trainer for Kenny Shoes for many years. A lot of mm. people don't know that Kenny's came out with um, Foot Locker. Kinney's came really? out with uh, Foot Locker. Kinney's came out with Champs. And that's kind of why uh, a lot of people really don't know that in terms of the uh, shoe business. But uh, that's kind of where it is. I, I know after Kinney's closed, I didn't know what I was going to do. So I bought up a lot of the product and opened up my own shoe store. And uh, that's kind of what I did. I, I had shoes for brides. I had shoes for bridesmaids. It was really a bridal type shoe store. And I did that for a few years and I really had fun doing that. Mm -hmm. And then you retired and um, you know, found that love of, um, of cut glass. <laughs> well, I, I really didn't retire right after that. I went on to do a few different things. I worked some call centers. I work uh, for AmeriCorps. I don't know if anybody's familiarized with that. AmeriCorps did a lot of volunteer work. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm still kind of ret uh, retired, semi-working, and that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, you know, I try to stay busy, but um, my my work right now with these pictures are actually hobby slash business. Yeah, and um, and you know, and I've I've heard you talk about these pictures before. Um, I've seen you at a few different events where you actually donated some of these pictures to different events. And um, and honestly, I see the passion when you're talking about this. I mean, <laughs> you know, and it, it and it's great because um, you know, they say if you um, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. You know, you're, um, you're right about that, Steve. You know, it's 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 a really touchy subject dealing with these uh, broken glass because I know a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the superstition: uh, seven years of bad luck when you're dealing with glass. <laughs> So I hear a lot of these different things, but uh, I keep positive because I'm, I've never been into superstition. I know in Jamaica they had a, they had a lot of duppies and ghosts. I don't know if you ever heard the word duppy before. <laughs> yeah, but, the Alpha Barbados, we know about duppy. <laughs> oh, you do? Okay. But yeah. I remember saying that to a few people in there. Well, uh, they're trying to look up uh, Gungoodle and uh, what kind of word is that? But uh, where, when we deal with these superstition, we can't really, uh, you know, we have to pursue what we really love. I can see them now going, hey, Google, what is Duppy? <laughs> well, I said that on my phone came on. <laughs> I know. You know? <laughs> oh, man, that's too funny. So um, you said you were traveling back and forth to Maryland before. Are you still in, um, do you still go back and forth to Maryland? I still go back and forth. Uh, my sister's there. My mother's still there. And, mm -hmm. you know, with COVID right now, uh, you don't want to really go anywhere. You want to kind of uh, wait it out because, uh, to me, it's not the right time to travel. Um, right. You know, as much as I want to see them, you have to kind of, you know, be leery of these, not getting on the airlines. But, uh, you know, I, I just don't want to take that chance right now. Right. I hear you. I understand. Um, and um, and guys, if any of you guys want to call in, you want to talk directly to Earl. The, um, the phone lines are open. You can um, you can call right now nine five four nine three three talk. That's nine five four nine three three eight two five five, and you'll be right on the line with him. So you could ask him any questions that you want to ask him. You know, try to buy a piece if you want to buy a piece. You know, um, now the large one that you were talking about before, um, this one right here. What does the price, what does something like that go for? Because you said this was an oversized one, right? Yeah, that's that's a $300 piece there. Uh, that's it's, good. It's, yeah, it's, you know, a lot of people, uh, to be honest with you, when I first started doing these earlier last year, I made a couple, uh, some people got excited because they'd never seen it before. Uh, but mm -hmm. when they ask me the price, you know, and I tell them like $100, I haven't heard from them, they're hiding and, you know, it's because, you know, these days it's a little tough for art, but on a mm. different level, art is actually booming, to be honest with you. Right, right. There's a lot of people that have moved money out of the stock market. They're invested in property. They're invested in art. And I could not believe the amount of art people are selling, not for myself, but I did my research 
and people are in their homes and they're like looking around and they're like people with money. Well, let me change this. So people are making drastic changes because I will tell you one thing about art. When you have something in your house that really like uh, look good and you appreciate it, it makes you feel better. Okay. Yes. Art will make you feel better, especially if you appreciate it. And that's what I'm finding out. And sometimes and you thing, have to, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Sometimes you have to change your surrounding to feel better. And that's what's happening with art right now. And the thing is, each piece is, is an original. Each piece is unique. There are no two pieces alike because you can't break two pieces of glasses alike. <laughs> no. And, you know, it, it's, it's, I'm glad you brought that up because people actually think I sit there and I try to cut these pieces. I have never mm. cut a piece of glass to make an object or shape. You have to pick out the piece and go ahead and assemble it to get something in terms of pictures. And that's what I do. The uniqueness about this is using pieces to create something that you would not believe that you could create. So it's imagination. And uh, my pictures actually start from the frames to the background, to the uh, picking out uh, what you're gonna use with the glass. Because when I was younger, I used to love frames. Frames, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about frames. Unfortunately, when I first started out making pictures early last year, I used to get into these um, kind of uh, weird looking frames and people really didn't like the, uh, they liked the picture, but they didn't like the frame. So now you see them streamlining with a, 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 the, the, the frames that's a lot thinner and more modern, mm -hmm. is that the right word? So that's what's going on with that. All right, and what about if, um, if someone wanted a piece like, um, you know, like, um, like people playing cricket? Um, if they wanted to commission a piece of people playing cricket or something, what would something like that cost them? Well, to be honest with you, I, I try to stay away from commission work, uh, you know, uh, cricket, I could do, I could do something like that, but it's, it's, it would have to come to me. Uh, a lot of times I sit down, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, there have been a couple of commission work that I got away with, but the people were like expecting something else. Now, when you pick out a glass and a lady say, I want you to make some, I want to make a picture looking like me and you're dealing mm. with glass, it's not going to look like you. Okay. It's, it's, <laughs> So the commission work, uh, like you're dealing with crickets, the wicket, one wicket might be a little longer than the other. And so what kind of cricket are you playing? What is this? You, you, so you have to try to kind of um, stay away from commission work. And that's what mm. I do. If, if somebody, uh, one person said, well, I want you to make, I want you to make something that comes to you. I don't know. I don't care what it is. I could kind of deal with that, but you still have to be careful because you don't know uh, exactly what the person's beliefs are. It's, it's a lot of things that go into them. And I just like when my pictures uh, sell to somebody that really, really appreciate my pictures. Yeah, and um, we just had a request to see some of your work again, so I put it back on the screen so, um, so Sharon can see it. Um, these are just two of the pictures. Um, how many do you do you show at any galleries or anything like that or do you uh, do um any kind of art shows yes i've been to a couple of art shows um what it is i use my instagram a lot right now uh if somebody wanted to go on instagram right now and uh at ferguson oral at uh f-e-r-g-u-s-o-n-o-r-e-l you'll see basically all uh, most of my pictures uh right now i have about 45 pictures uh, most wow. of my pictures are actually so out of town, uh, out of state. I don't know why, but that's, I've been lucky, uh, in terms <laughs> of, uh, you know, I'm not making a, a killing selling them. I'm not depending on mm. it paying my rent, but it's, it's in an infant stage right now. It's, it's not like I've been doing this for 20 years. I started 20 years ago, but I got serious, uh, last year. So let me ask you, um, how do you do the, the, um, the glass? Do you just go out in the backyard with a baseball bat and hit a mirror? Or what? <laughs> what well, Steve, do you, you, do? Got the idea, you got the idea. And um, at first, <laughs> I, used to, I used to look for little broken pieces. <clears throat> but now mm -hmm. I just get a, a sheet of glass. I, I wrap it up real nice. 
Uh, sometimes I'll drink a beer before whatever the case may be there. And I just, I just, I just beat the uh, crap out of it until it splinter in different pieces. And then I use those pieces and I create something. I try to find glass that's already cracked, you know, I, I repurpose mm -hmm. them. Uh, but right now I find that I have to be very careful with the, uh, the type of glass I get because it cannot be too thick. The thickness mm -hmm. of glass will take away from the image. So I'll look for a more thinner, a much more thinner glass or a thin, thinner stained glass to make these pictures. And that just was, um, I, I was just about to ask you, um, have you ever thought about taking the beer bottle when you're done and just um, cracking that? But then that's too thick. That's the thick glass. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, Steve, I have only used mirrors and stained glass. I have never ventured off in any other glass. Mm -hmm. uh, I think when it when it all kind of started was my first picture is using these mirrors. One night I created a small picture and I put it on a wall and the light was off. And when I looked at it, it just the reflection was so beautiful. And, it's, and I, it really inspired me to make a couple more. So that, mm -hmm. that mirror in a, in a dark black background is kind of my pieces I used to start doing at first. If I wasn't if I wasn't transferred to Florida, I probably still would be using that dark that, um, background. But when I came to Florida, everything was colorful. Uh, you know, remember the islands, and uh, that kind of forced me to using more color. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but my original pieces was um, just strictly a dark background with with the mm -hmm. mirror. Yeah. Just hey, um, Oral, I gotta take a quick com um, quick commercial break. All right, guys, stay with us. We'll be back in just two minutes, all right? Um, all right, there we go. If your car could talk, it would say call Curvin's Car Detailing Service. It's mobile, and they can come to you no matter where you are in Broward County. Give Curvin a call, 954-549-8507, and tell them that Steve sent you. Let me tell you about CCTV RX. With over 30 years in the security industry here in South Florida, they have proven themselves to be the first choice when it comes to security professionals. So whether you're trying to secure your home or your business, there's no other choice. Give them a call today for a free estimate. 754-213-2820. Take me there. I want some real good food to eat. I want shocking it down. designers to get your taste palette back in line baby follow us at we shop all right and we're back we're talking with um Earl ferguson and he is a cut glass artist correct did i get it right? did i get it right that is, sir? That is correct okay because i always say broken glass because you break the glass but um you know um, so anyhow, so um, we were talking before about your um, your method. So do you go into do you go out in the backyard and and break the glass with the idea of what you want, or do you just look at it and then you go like how we do with the clouds and we go, huh, that cloud looks like um, a guy riding a horse, and then you um, then you put it together. <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, you you break it up. Uh, you can have I have thousands of pieces and. You kind of look for that, you know, a lot of times you sit there, you can't make anything because nothing come to you. You have to kind of, mm. uh, the art with the glass, sometimes it have to come to you. But the way I get started sometimes is with, with the thousands of pieces, sometimes I see that one piece, it could resemble like a shoe. And it, it's that one piece that get me started. And and sometimes you're looking through the pieces, you're just not seeing anything. You're moving things around and 
So it's a process. But once you get that one piece, it seems like things come to you. And sometimes you have to wait a couple of days to find another piece. And that's kind of how the process go. All right. Um, I think I have a comment here. Let me see if I can get the mouse over there to the comment. There we go. <laughs> Uh, Sharon said, um, you might have answered this already, but what strikes your passion to do this? Um, I think what really, really um, hit the passion was the fact that I, uh, it was a compliment I really got. And I knew I saw something for myself, but you, you, sometimes you never know how people are going to react. But if somebody mm -hmm. keeps telling you year in and year out, you know, uh, when are you going to do another one or, you know, when, they, when they're excited. Or did that not make your work increase? That kind of pushed me a lot more so because I have more time mm -hmm. on my hand. Uh, you know, and I, I see more things. I've created, uh, matter of fact, uh, three uh, different cor uh, uh, coronavirus pictures. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the response in those is very, very positive because it's you're leaving history. So um, I spent mm -hmm. a lot of time. Uh, I'm getting more more technical with the pictures now, and I'm spending more time for the detail than I ever did before. At first, I used to get really excited, go out there, and uh, there was a couple of times I created some pictures, and the next day I look at it and say, "Man, I didn't do that one." So you you kind of <laughs> you you, you kind of get excited. You you get ex you you actually sometimes you destroy a couple of pictures. Because there's a couple of really? times, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, that I went out there and I drank a couple of beers late in the evening and I created something. The next day I look at it, I say, I would never buy that one. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of, if, if, if I don't feel good about it, even although um, other people might feel good about it, it's totally different. I remember going to one show and I took, uh, I took a few of my best speeches, pictures and at the very last moment I took a picture because it was smaller and that was the only one I saw a person fell in love with it uh, that was uh, one mm -hmm. of the running man the running man ones I did so you never know what somebody's gonna like but I, I I'm kind of stick on really making sure that I love the piece uh, before I put it out there all right and and that's interesting because it's like you know you may not buy it and you may not like it but another person I mean I might love it and right. I'm like, wow. So for you to, how long does it take you to create a piece? Uh, I could go anywhere from three days to two weeks. Um, uh, two weeks is probably on a lot of the, the bigger ones that, uh, uh, it, you know, if you're going to be selling something for like 300 bucks, you're going to be a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be a little bit more careful in terms of um, the detail involved. Uh, the detail is with everyone, but sometimes I, when I'm making them, I just get totally, totally excited. I just, you know, uh, this, my, this is my therapy uh, for myself. I'm not paying for it. Mm -hmm. You know, people need to go out there and get therapy help. This is my therapy, and that's what I enjoy doing. All right. And now Sharon was asking, did you go to school for this or, or even for, the, um, for art? Because um, like, um, like we were showing your, um, your pieces you did the backgrounds and everything. Did you go to school for the art or anything at all? No, I didn't. I didn't go to school for any of this at all. Everything is self-taught. And to be honest with you, I've been around uh, some galleries, some artists in the past, and uh, they, they're using all these uh, big terminologies that I never heard in my life. They're <laughs> asking me different questions on my piece. And sometimes when I tell them that, you know, I never been to school, uh, this is self-taught, they look at me like the, the jaws actually drop because they, you know, uh, you have people with master's degree that went to school for art. And I, I, I used to get intimidated at one time, but I don't get intimidated now because I've been to some art shows that I was, I, I was actually the talk of the town because nobody had it. I had a combination of the background with the, the colors and then I'm putting something unique in there. So, you know, people would surround me, ask me questions and stuff. So I feel confidence in what I'm doing. And I know I stand out uh, in any art show that I go to because nobody else is doing it. I'm not cocky, but it's just the way I feel. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> um, 
I, I don't know, not picking up. Oh, there we go. For some reason, they didn't want to move over. Um, Sharon was saying she couldn't find you, so I'm actually um, getting your information here so I can put you on, um, on put it on the screen too. Um, let's see. Let me just go ahead and put that in there. And you guys could call in if you want to talk directly to Oral. You can call in, um, you know, um, let's see, just 954-933-TALK. That's 954-933-8255, and you'll be right on the line, like Phil Donahue. Like, call or say what? Nah, you know. <laughs> That's Most of them good. probably don't even remember who Phil Dunahue is. I know. It's you know. Yeah. He was around for a while though, if I, I can remember. Yeah, he was around for a good while. Um, yeah, his name is right here on the um on actually it's right on the screen, yeah. <laughs> and I'm I'm here looking up and I um I, I I'm typing it, didn't realize it's right there on the screen. But anyhow, um and I'll also have a link on my page to show more, um, you know, take you directly to um, to Earl's um, Instagram and to his Facebook and things like that so that you guys could just go straight to lunchtimetalkwithsteve.com, click on it, and boom, you just go right to um, to all of his different social media pages. Um, and you are working on a website. It's going to be coming out soon, right? Yeah, my website is almost finished, and that was outsourced. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, Steve, uh, have a, making a website for uh, artwork is very, very, you know, it's like you got to be spot on because, you know, people go through it. And if it's not set up correctly, you know, you, people are going to miss you. So I have somebody that um, they're pretty good at what they're doing. So we'll see right. how it comes out. I'm excited. I'm waiting. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I, I can't wait either because I know it's going to be great. Um, and um, and even like, you know, um, artwork on um, on the web, you got to be, you know, it's like it has to be constantly changing because your pieces change a lot. So, it, you know, it's yeah. got to be something that, that you can manage on the fly and everything. So, yeah, I understand it does take that extra time to make it happen, you know? Yeah, that's so true. But uh, so um, go ahead. No, you go ahead. So where have you shipped pieces to? Um, I mean, you said they're normally out of state. I mean, you ship out the country. Do people, um, have you had someone like, you know, a sheik in Dubai or order one or something? <laughs> it's actually three states. Uh, Texas, of course. Texas, Boston, and New York. And Maryland. These are the four states that I've shipped to. And, you know, when you get repeat customers, is even better. Because, you know, I have to say one thing about repeat customers. I had a situation where I made a piece uh, maybe uh, six months ago, and then mm -hmm. I came up with another piece, and the customer called and said, hey, can I exchange it for this new piece? And, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's kind of tricky when you're dealing with creating something different because, you know, the, the art is, is changing. I'm work, working right now on the uh, two-dimensional where I'm setting glass upon glass to get a different effect. So that's in the work. Uh, but that's kind of kind of what it is. If you look at the work from last year, early last year to now, it's like night and day, mm -hmm. you know, because um, they, you know, I'm kind of evolving. Things are coming to me. So that's that's what's going on with the uh, new pieces. So do you typically allow people to trade in a piece or um, was that just a one time special um, special thing? That's a one-time special thing I did for that customer because that customer was one of my first customers. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually I remember my first customers and the ones that really, really got excited when they purchased a piece. You could tell mm -hmm. if somebody's buying something just to, to, to help you out or just to, you know, that they're excited. There's two kinds of customers. There's one that, you know, really, really appreciate it. And there's one that's like, oral. I know you're kind of retired, so I'm going to buy. What's the cheapest piece you have that I can help you out? You know, so they, they would buy something and probably stick it in the garage somewhere. Uh, but <laughs> I'm talking about people that really, really love it and say, hey, nobody else have it. Because to be honest with you, I've had customers that, you know, uh, gave me some feedback after selling stuff. People came over and just kept staring at it. And a whole conversation came up in terms of mm -hmm. reaction. And it's different. Nobody else have it. You know, it can't be duplicated. 
if if I wanted to duplicate any of my pictures right now, I could never do it. You know, even with the, mm -hmm. the biggest technology, you can never duplicate a picture. So that's the unique thing about it is that, um, you know, people make things out of shells, out of this, out of that. Why not glass? And, uh, you know, um, I'm just, you know, I keep telling people it's, it's evolving, you know, uh, and it's growing at more people, more people. I had some sales set up before the coronavirus uh, came across. I'm, I'll be honest with you. People say, you know, or I'm still working on this. I'm going to get this piece. And when the coronavirus hit, you know, I understand, you know, they, 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 it's not like I'm calling them to bother them, but I understand with this virus and what's going on, people are not going to spend money on a picture. I'm talking about a different income bracket uh, right. because they have, they have things, they have, uh, they, they, a lot of them have their kids, a lot of them, the, the job is not there anymore. You know, so this is not, you know, the haves and the, the, the haves on the needs and this is something they don't really need. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I take all that in consideration, but it's still not going to really stop me. I'm still going to go ahead and keep doing what I'm doing. So um, the earlier, the two pieces that we looked at, one was 150 and the other was um, 300. But Sharon was asking, what is your, your price range? What's your minimum and your, I guess, if there's a maximum? <laughs> Uh, I, I think you're dealing with probably I'm, uh, you're probably right in the 100 area, $100 area piece right now in terms of the mm -hmm. price points. I've made a couple of pieces since coronavirus down to like maybe 50 bucks, you know, because uh, making a smaller piece is more intense than making a larger piece, you know, mm -hmm. because when you make a tiny piece, you know, the glass, it's a lot more detail. It's almost like when I was working with uh, Kenny Shoes. Uh, it took a lot more money to make kid shoes than it did for adult shoes. Really? Yes. You know, because of the, they, 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 the mold that they use for kid shoes versus the adult shoes is like night and day. So it, it's a lot more money to make kid shoes than adult shoes. The same thing with a pitcher. You, when you're making a smaller pitcher, the detail in terms of the glass and finding the little tiny pieces to with that shape, it's, it's 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 a lot more work. All right. She was asking if you do special requests. Um, we, we actually I asked him that earlier, but he was saying, no, he doesn't do commission pieces, really. But um, but you have a um, you can go to the Instagram page, which is going to um, I, like I said, I'm going to put a link on my page after after the show and you can go to his Instagram. You can see the ones that he already has and you can choose from there. How many pieces do you have right now, Earl? I'm up, I have about 45 pieces. I have about 45 pieces, and I'm finishing up two pieces uh, by the end of this week. There's two more pieces that I, it's been in motion, and uh, 45 right now. So, all right. That's pretty cool. You know, and like I said already, um, every piece is an original. Every piece is, is unique. There are no two pieces alike. So, you know, people definitely have to take that into consideration when they're, when they're buying a piece or, you know, when they're looking at the piece. There's no two pieces alike. You know, um, not like when you go to one of those galleries and, and you see 10 people um, already bought prints of this. No. Right. <laughs> I know. Um, have you have you ever thought of doing prints of your of um your your um your pictures like maybe just taking a professional picture of it a really nice one and then just do a print of it or you just want to keep it as the glass? I have never thought about that, but I I think moving forward is something to think about. It's a great idea. Um, I just never re really venture off into it. You got to remember. This stuff really started getting more serious early last year. So the infant stage is still there. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. it's still evolving. You know, uh, you know, I get a lot of different questions in terms of when I tell people I did one 20 years ago, they they, you know, so you should be like Da Vinci right now. No, not necessarily. It's it's still progressing as we move <laughs> forward. <You know? laughs> and the thing is, people don't understand with art too is um is your mind, your mind um, matures with, um, you know, and, and the art matures with it as well. So like you said, that was a year ago. Now, um, after the coronavirus, you're seeing life a little bit different. When you go out, you're going to see things a little bit different, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, the same way the world changes, your perception of, um, of the world is going to change and the art is going to reflect that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so there's, there's a lot to it, you know. 
Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, I've seen your pieces. Your pieces are great. You know, Thank when you. I when when I get my mansion, I want to get one of those um, <laughs> one of those um, big ones. You know, what's the largest size that you do? The largest size I have right now, I think, is thirty six by forty eight. That's the largest one I have wow. right now. Um, I, I try not to, uh, you know, I'm not at the point where I have a really big truck or SUV that I could, you know, when I take them to shows, I have to kind of, the easel have to be in there, the tables I have. So mm. I try to, I'm like a pickup and go. I could set up an art show. And Steve, you've seen me set up a little mini thing at uh, an right. event there. Uh, that's kind of what I do. I can, I can tailor the in event. In five minutes. <laughs> yeah, like in and out type thing. And I also can do a big event, but I try to, I, you know, it's, it's, um, it's good because I just want to get my art out there and I show it to a lot of people, you know, I, I can't really do it as much now because, you know, sometimes you go around these places that people are struggling. The last thing you want to see is somebody bringing some glass pitches around, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> they're trying to keep their doors open to be worrying about trying to buy some pictures. So, you know, I understand. Uh, but, you know, I, I really feel things are going to get better. And I think Absolutely. that the, the people that's um, doing something a little different and they're staying with it, it's going to pay rewards. And so you, you can't just give up and say, well, this, this uh, coronavirus is going to be forever. I think, you know, we're really going to have to put our foot down to get it stopped, you know, mm -hmm. and that's going to take a while. But I still think that you, you have to follow your passion. Uh, you have to, if something is not working, you have to work at something else. So I've been learning other things on the side other than art, because I know that, um, you know, you, you, you can't put all your eggs in one basket. So that's kind of right. where I'm at, you know, right now. And the thing, too, is to pivot. Um, like yesterday, I had um, um, a chef on, um, on the show. Ryan Redeno, um, and he was, um, he's a, a chef to the celebrities out in Los Angeles, and he's done so much different stuff. But now since the corona, he doesn't have the big parties to cook for because no one's doing those big parties anymore. Mm -hmm. So what he did was he just, you know, did a total pivot and started still cooking the same meals. But right. now um, he has them as um, meal preparation where he um, he just you know, put them in the containers um, and he can send them out to the people. So it's like he took what he was already doing and um, and just changed it around a little bit and is make, still making money during the pandemic. So like I tell people, just find a way to pivot what you're doing. And um, and yeah, you know, it, it, uh, it, it'll be a great thing because honestly, I, I mean, what you're doing, your artwork is awesome. It's great work. Thank you very much. Uh, my, my point right now with the pictures is actually saying that, um, you know, surround yourself with something beautiful in your home because you're spending more time at home, you know? Yeah, so definitely. I, I'm going to come up with some kind of phrase on that one, but uh, that's kind of where it is. You know, um, you just have to follow that passion. You just have to, uh, you know, uh, matter of fact, this uh, market day uh, four that we're looking at here again, it actually started back with market day one. So I actually have market day one, market day two, market day three, and this is market day four. Uh, market day one was sold. Uh, market day two was actually auctioned off. So in the home right now, I'm sitting on market day three and market day four. You know, I, I try to do some, um, you know, charity work if I can, because I just love getting them out there. Uh, hopefully the people that have them appreciate it. And that's my ultimate goal. You know, you, you maybe you should do a virtual auction or something with, um, with your artwork during the, um, the pandemic, you know, that'd be a, um, a great thing too. Um, you know, just have it where people could, um, could bid on the, um, on the artwork. And I don't know, we'll talk about that. Maybe we could do something like, like a virtual yeah. auction. I mean, that'll be a great thing. That's a great idea, Steve. We, we need people like you. That's uh, give me probably $55, $65, $75, $85, $85. Enough. <laughs> a person like you, Steve, probably would do, be great at something like that. I don't, <laughs> I don't have any insight on that, but I, I'd be more than happy to do that. I'll have all my pictures up. And hey, you know, if, if that's possible, hey, let's go ahead and do it, man. We'll talk about that. We're going to look into that and see because <laughs> that would be pretty cool. <laughs>
<laughs> oh yeah. I, you know what, Steve? I get I really get um I, I really like looking at these options. The people that are actually doing it when they speak so fast, half the time I don't know what they're on they're saying. They they're they they be talking these different dollars going real fast and you know, I'm, I'm looking at people putting up their hand and stuff like that. I just love watching something like that. I don't know about you, but I love it. I tell you, it's great. I'm, I, I remember, um, actually, I used to go to an auction, Jay Sugarman auction um, in um, North Miami, right okay. off of 183rd and 95. And mm -hmm. um, that's how they used to do it because what he would do is he would auction off things um, like when companies go out of business or restaurants okay. or whatever, um, all the stuff they um, they would get the things from um, they would get the things and auction them off in um, either for the company or for the county if the comp the county actually foreclosed on it, and okay. they would they would do that and you're seeing people going up and the hand going up and I'm like they, I, I can't even catch what this guy is saying, I know. Like, and I'm like what what is this? By the time yeah. I catch it, he's saying sold, and I'm like, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They hit the hammer down, and boom, boom. So it's it's great. I mean, you know, it, it's um, I um, there's there's ways. I you know, I do some research on some of these uh, virtual art shows that's going on, and they're amazing. You know, the technology that goes behind it, and part of it is is uh, you know, being aware of the technology and confidence in dealing with the technology. So it's, it's something that's not a learning process uh, with the um, coronavirus right now. Uh, there's still a lot to learn, okay? And you have to take advantage of, you know, YouTube because I've been going on YouTube. I've never been a tech savvy person, I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, man, even when I used to work at Kinney Shoes as a trainer manager, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I mean, I had my ups and downs. Uh, people ask me how I was successful. I just really hired people smarter than me, and that's how I got away with it. You know? I mean, you want a job? Do you know how to do this? Uh, do you know how to do this computer with all the stuff they're talking about? Yes, you do it. You teach me, boom, you got a job. So that's kind of how I used to kind of deal with um, as a trainer. I always had good people around me, and I was always able to find good people. That's how I survived. Yeah. All right, give me two seconds. I need to run a, um, um, a quick commercial break and um, we'll be right back with you. You yeah. know, we do, you gotta, gotta pay the bills, you know. <laughs> yes, sir. Let me tell you about CCTV RX. With over 30 years in the security industry here in South Florida, they have proven themselves to be the first choice when it comes to security professionals. So whether you're trying to secure your home or your business, there's no other choice. Give them a call today for a free estimate. 754-213-2820. If your car could talk, it would say call Curvin's Car Detailing Service. It's mobile and they can come to you no matter where you are in Broward County. Give Curvin a call, 954 Five four nine eight five zero seven, and tell them that Steve sent you. All right, and we are back. All right, um, so um, we're talking to Earl Ferguson, and Earl is um is a cut glass artist. So um, you know, we're talking about some of his art, which is right here. You know, um, and as you guys can see, this one here is a person climbing a, a coconut tree. Yeah, I don't want to say a guy because women climb trees too. We, um, you know, growing up in the islands, we know every the, the women can do it. The girls can do what we do. You know, that's it. That <laughs> and, is this one here, and this one here is market day, which I, I love this piece. I love both pieces. They're actually really good. The sun up here. What um, what did you use for the sun? Or is that a painting? Is that that's part of the painting? Paint? That's, that's a painting. Everything is a painting. And uh, be honest with you, Steve, uh, we're not really looking at some of the, uh, the, the auto work with the roughage in the back, but a lot of the pictures I make is um, even before it's painted over, there's a roughage in the back to give it a different effect. Uh, that actually is a sun that was a painted sun in the background there, and it was mm -hmm. done with a much thicker uh, paint. Uh, this, you know, it's a much thicker paint that's laid on top of the, uh, the paint uh, that's in the background. Mm -hmm. Wow, these are nice. These are very nice. We definitely have to do that auction. I'm telling you. Yes, sir. 
So now, um, what about um, the idea of possibly even teaching a class? Um, teaching, um, you know, we spoke about that before, teaching um, the kids at one of the schools that I, um, that I volunteer at, and we spoke about different things. What about, what about that? Or would you possibly even open up um, some kind of a class where you can have people come in and learn how to do cut glass, um, you know? I'm open to it. Um, I remember on one show I was on there and uh, they were speaking about, um, you know, cutting, uh, do I wear gloves? And uh, a class like that, I would actually have to start wearing gloves uh, with mm -hmm. the student because I don't wear gloves uh, when I do mine because it's all with the feel. You know, um, you know, I, I'm just used to feeling them. And it, the feel is very important in terms of, you know, picking them up. Uh, gloves, I don't know. Um, I, I'll try it just to see how I feel with a glove. But I'm open to teaching. I, I uh, really, really want to teach this work uh, because mm -hmm. I think uh, there's, you know, there's a lot other people are going to see that I'm not seeing in terms of these pieces. So I'm open up to all that in terms of teaching and, uh, you know, uh, let me know. I know you deal with the kids a lot. And uh, yeah. if you show a demonstration, I'll be open to do that at any time. You know, I just had an idea in my mind here because, <clears throat> you know, um, you know how you have the um, the thing where people go and do the art and they um, and they do the wine. You know, you could, you could do art and wine. Yours could be called something like cut glass of wine or cut glass of wine or something, you know, like a glass of wine. Get it? <laughs> oh, OK. I got you. Yeah. Cut no, glass, glass of wine. There. Huh? You say the glass is in there. So that would kind of. Yeah, and, and call the name cut glass and wine or something. I think something like that would work. You know, you could have something like that where people we could come on. Be careful. We still got to be careful there, Steve, because when you're dealing with wine and people drinking and breaking it up, you know, we, we, we don't want to have too much wine. <laughs> maybe a glass, maybe one glass. One glass, one glass, one glass. Because, <laughs> you know, when, they, when they come to the event and the event is like, my thing is uncut glass pitchers, and they're drinking wine, and they're thinking about breaking up some wine glasses. Uh, I'm gonna put you in charge <laughs> of that department because I think you'd handle that a bit, lot better than I would. <laughs> It'll be like at a Greek restaurant, you know, where you have a good meal, you um, you break the um, the plates and everything, you know. Yeah, that's wild, man. Some of those cultures, I, I think even on some weddings, they do a lot of breaking a glass. Um, yeah, you know. So. You, you, you you stomp on the glass um in order to um you know when you first get married yeah, yeah Sharon so. said she would go to she would go to something like that see I'm telling oh, you yeah well, yeah that's a that's a great idea Steve let's let's get some tickets sold while we're on air <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you that let's let's figure something out and make it happen I'm telling you see that's what it's all about though the collaboration you know right. See, look, Tika's, Tika's um, um, chiming in. Tika said, cut glass, wine, and cheese social event. There you go. Show you this oh, one wow. Here. That one's this, nice. I know. It might be a little reflection there, but this is the uh, coronavirus one. Uh, this was made of strictly shattered glass. And this was That's done nice. for historical uh, reasons for the coronavirus. And I thought I'd just kind of put that up there real quick. Yep. That is a nice piece. Hold it up again. Let um let let them see it again. Wow. Sorry about the reflection that, of the glass. Can no, you see that's it? good. That's good. Okay. Um. Yeah. I'm actually gonna do, um, do a quick screenshot of that because um I want to just put it up on the screen a little bit so people can see it. Um. Yeah. But that's nice. I like that. You good? Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Wow, that's nice, man. I'm see how talented you are. Uh, thank you. <laughs> that's probably what I should man. have done earlier, Steve. I should just be lifting up some pieces and showing them to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, um, I'm telling you, the, everyone, they're um, they're jumping on the idea of the um, cut glass of wine cheese event. Wow, you know. Let's do this. We got to make that happen, you know? There you go. Six feet apart, though. Yeah. Yeah, six feet apart. Cause this way you only, you, and, and that'll be even good, because then you only have, like, maybe five or six tables in, um, in a room, you know? Well, okay. 
Let me see if um let me go to I think um, I might just um all right there we go. So now let's go ahead and um and share that one so we can put that up on the screen too. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> and that's a nice one because, I mean, you got um, your coronavirus thing right there. The person's mm -hmm. holding up a shield blocking it. And you did yeah. not cut this glass at all. You just broke it and you yeah. and you just took the pieces from um, from, you know, from the the roughage, if you will, and just um, put them together. That's it. That's it. You find a first you find a piece and just make that angle and, uh, you know, just work around it. And, you know, um, a lot of the, uh, the, a couple of the other ones I made, uh, the person actually have on a mask. And this person also have on a mask. Do not be honest with you. The, the mask is on the person right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. This is great. Thank you. So what part, what part did you find first when you were, when you were doing it? Uh, to be honest with you, I was looking at the little small piece in the, uh, it was called, this is the only, the mass is the only piece on this one that has mm -hmm. stained glass. So it was a small white piece of stained glass that I saw that kind of got me started in, and that was the mass. And from there, I kind of build around it because um, the, yeah, most of the pictures I'm using now is, is a more, a higher percentage of stained glass versus the mirror. But this one, mm -hmm. I thought that if I use more mirror, it will reflect a lot more. And I have a coronavirus that I did actually that it, it, it's all, it's strictly um, stained glass. But this one, I wanted to do it a little bit different because I know the background would actually bring out the mirror. So I reflected back on when I started early last year in terms of a theme that I wanted to use. And that's why I use mirrors only uh, with that tiny piece of stained glass. So what does something like this go for? Uh, that one is about 175. Again, very good price. Very, very good price. Mm -hmm. And Steve, and another thing before I forget here, uh, you know, 90% of my pitches are already framed. They're already framed with a glass over them, uh, you know, and uh, the frame is there. And, you know, this one, I did not have a glass over it because of the fact that it was a thicker, you know, so I just have it in the frame. And this is the exception to the rule. But 90% of the pictures have already have glass and frame already completed. And I was going to ask you that, too, um, you know, because this frame alone is this is a pretty good frame. That's that that's not a cheap frame. That's that's not a Dollar Tree frame. That's like a, that's not even a Walmart frame. That's that's more like a David's or one of those kind of high end um, um, kind of kind of places. That's right, Steve. I can tell you do a lot of shopping at those places. And uh, what I really wanted to say there is that I love me some frames. And sometimes I, I will really see a frame and I would visualize what I would try to put into it. And so mm. a lot of the frames I have is frames that I personally fell in love with. And they were just important to me as a lot of the pictures I put in it. And sometimes people don't understand that because sometimes I have a, a really nice picture, but the people just don't love the frame. And they said it doesn't, they, it doesn't go with their decor, if that's the right word. Uh, but I love me some frames, and this is one of my favorite frames. So yeah, this um, is a beautiful frame. I think it would, you know, some of the frames I feel would would blend in with just about anything. But we're in a modern era right now, so I just think that a lot of these pictures, believe you me, when you have one of them, and if if it's in your home and somebody come and visit you, it's going to be a talking point because they never oh, definitely. Seen it. Never seen it before. And that's why I catch a lot of attention sometimes when I go to these shows. Uh, people are just, you know, they're just inquisitive because they've never seen it before. And some people mm. get scared because they said it might be so expensive. Some people, uh, they will kind of back off, you know, because it's you know, so my goodness, you know, they, they think it costs hundreds and thousands of dollars. It doesn't. This is very inexpensive pictures, you know, exactly. and I try to be very reasonable because I want to get my work out there. And uh, that's the whole and, point about it. Go ahead. 
And Tika, um, Tika put um, a comment. She said, it looks as if someone's in battle fighting against the coronavirus, saying You're, you will be defeated and you have no place here. So it's like people can look at your artwork and just come up with the story right away around that artwork. And that's, that, that's the beauty of art, you know? That is true. I, I have done some pieces, uh, Steve, that people, I, I saw one thing and then people are just telling me something totally different than they're seeing. And then when I look at it, I say, yeah, oh, I see what you're saying. So, you know, and a lot of times it's customers that name I featured on my pieces. I remember when I did my first uh, Dancing in the uh, Moonlight, um, mm. I really didn't have a name for it. I sent it off to a, a guy out of state, and then he sent me a song, Dancing in the Moonlight, and then I, I, I named it Dancing in the Moonlight. And then from there, I made four other pieces, Dancing in the Moonlight, one, two, three, four, and five. So, you know, it's people that inspire some of the names that come out with this one, you know, these different pieces. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I'm telling you, you, this is this is good work. Um, I think we need to sit and chat about that, um, that virtual auction thing, um, you know, see what Man, we can I'm, really do on that. <laughs> I'm ready. You're the, you're, the, you're the perfect person for this, Steve, in terms of you reach so many people, man. Let's go ahead and do it. <laughs> Let's make that happen. All right. So, um, do you have any? Um, one, you have a one minute wrap up for my um, for my viewers. Um, you know, just anything you want to a nugget of information you want to leave with them or anything? Yeah. To uh, to be honest with you, for the viewers are uh, still listening. Um, you know, feel free to just go to my um, you know, my Instagram. It's uh, Ferguson uh, Oral. That's uh, F E R G U S O N. So it's at Ferguson Oral. And uh, you'll be able to see, I would say, uh, right there, you probably see uh, maybe about 30 of them. And, uh, you know, feel free to go to my uh, um, Facebook page. You'll see some of them there, too. And that's, uh, you know, Ferguson J. Uh, I mean, Oral J. Ferguson. And, uh, you know, give me a call, too, if you have any questions. I mean, I'm here. I'm like everybody else. And uh, I can answer those questions, uh, you know, uh, in depth. Again, right. uh, thanks for your time, Steve, and I appreciate you having me. I'm looking forward in uh, talking to you to, in, in the near future, and, uh, you know, you have a great day. All right. Sounds good. Thank you very much for being on the show, Aro. As always, I mean, every time I talk to you, dude, it's like you always have a different piece of art, and, and it just is like, wow. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So um, let's go ahead and, um, and, and talk about the, um, the auction and see what we can do, okay? You got it, buddy. Thank you. All right. Talk to you later. Goodbye. All right, guys. Um, you know, again, I thank you guys very much for watching. As always, you know, um, we like to bring you the best of um, of the knowledge and, and the best of the artists and the people that we have in our community. Oral is doing something great, something outside the box that a lot of us, um, you know, are just now learning to appreciate. And um, and as we can see with some of the art that um, that he has, I mean, that artwork right there was awesome. You know, I love that. I love that one. That's great. Um, so let's do this. Let's let's if you guys need a piece of art or anything, let's go ahead and um, and get in touch with Arl and, and just pick up something um, like like he said, he has pieces as low as like thirty five dollars. It'll be in your house. And is, I guarantee you anyone that comes in. That's going to be the first thing they see, and that's going to be the first thing they talk about. And um, they're going to go home, and then they're going to come back and say, hmm, where'd you get that piece of art? Or they may even ask you right there and then. But the thing is, um, you know, we have a better appreciation for things. And like he said, when you have um, a piece of beauty in the house, it, it, it makes your house feel better. It makes it feel um, more welcoming, more inviting, you know. So look him up you know um and and um see if there's a piece that you would like from um from his collection all right guys um well it's a little bit after after one well a lot bit after one <laughs> so basically um you know it's time for us to to head back to work um and um, who do I have on tomorrow? I got to look at that and see. But check lunchtimetalkwithsteve.com. You'll see um, some of the, the past guests that we've had, some of the ones that are coming up on, um, on the show. And you'll get to see a lot, of, um, a lot more about the things that we're doing, a lot of um, the books that we've had on the show and um, different things. So check out the website, lunchtimetalkwithsteve.com. 
All right. Um, also, another thing is we have that get help section. So if you guys need help, please, please, please use the get help section. We have things on there like the suicide prevention hotline. Sometimes you guys might just need someone to talk to. We all need someone to talk to sometimes. It's totally confidential. There's also other things on there like 211 where if you need help with your rent, you need help with your light, whatever, they help you with that. If you need um, food, you can go and look up um, FarmShare or Feed America. These are all on the on the website. You just put into a zip code. It tells you where there's a food bank near um, near you and how you can go ahead and get the food from that food bank. Um, so all this information is there for you to use. Please do not just sit by and not use it, okay? Please go and use that information. Go to lunchtimetalkwithsteve.com. And you can um and you can go to the get help section and any of the things that you see on there. These are national um, organizations that are 100% confidential. It does not go through me. I'm just giving you the link to their organization. There's also the link to the national um national missing um and exploited children network. I I'm, I'm pretty sure I mixed up the words in there somewhere, but. Um, go into that as well. Put in your zip code. There are so many children that are missing, adults for that matter, that are missing. You don't know. You might pass that person in Walmart or Publix or or a 7-Eleven, and, um, and, or you might just see them on the street. Please check out those and see. All right, guys, as always, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and do a random act of kindness, all right? All right, guys, peace. Wow, wow, wow,